Welcome back to another X-Men film. This is X-Men Days of Future Past. Not the road cut. This is just the regular, normal version. This is the second look. Uh, I've, I've definitely seen this film multiple times. I'm a huge X-Men fan. And um, this is one of my... One of the better X-Men films. Um, I actually think this is much like X2. I think this built on... First Class. So X2 got better than X-Men. I think Future Past got better than First Class. Um, I own this. That's how I was able to get the audio description by Miles Neff. So click subscribe so we can talk about this film. I'm not going to start until you click subscribe. I'm just not going to do it. Okay, fine. I'll do it because if I, if I stop talking, then people will think I'm, the video has buffering or something. Anyway, um, <laughs> Days of Future Past features everybody, <laughs> uh, except for, you know, um, most of the X-Men from first class. Um, basically, they found a way to rope Havoc back in for like a second. So like Lucas Till is like, what's up? And then he, <laughs> and then he's gone. He's off camera. Um, but they did find a way. They were like, we might use Havoc in the next film. So if we could bring him in here. But when you, when you, if you've seen everything and you know how they use Havoc in the next film, it gets really disappointing. The amount of screen time that Havoc has in this series just gets sort of like, okay, so, um... We, uh, <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, Havoc is, uh, briefly in here, but this mostly, the returning characters featured are <sighs> Charles Xavier, played by James McAvoy, and Patrick Stewart, Magneto, played by Michael Fassbender, and Ian McKellen. Mystique, played just by Jennifer Lawrence. Rebecca Romaine was like, I am not putting that blue shit on my body. You. <laughs> so, Mystique is just Jennifer Lawrence. Um, and uh, Beast is just Nicholas Holt. I didn't, I um, don't, Kelsey Grammer's not in this, which is, is a shame. Um, but, uh, We've also got the rest of the past X-Men here. Uh, Wolverine, Hugh Jackman. Um, we've, get, we've got Kitty Pride, uh, Elliot Page. We've got uh, Colossus, Daniel Kudmore is here. Storm, Halle Berry. Um, and uh, Iceman, Sean Ashmore. We've got uh, some new people showing up. Uh, we've got Warpath. We've got Sunspot. We've got Blink. Um, so uh, definitely some interesting mutant references here. And for a little brief period, Mystique also gets to rescue a couple people. And we see like Toad. Um, and, and a couple others. So, yeah, it's a cool film. And, uh, it's, uh, it's the legendary sort of, it's one of the biggest, um, arcs from the X-Men comic book series that we really wanted to see turn into a film. Um, obviously Age of Apocalypse is the next one that they tackle, not very well, and also in its own sort of ridiculous fashion. This is a little bit closer, but it still is also not quite. Um, if I remember correctly in the comic book series, I do think Kitty actually travels back with Logan instead of doing this thing where she's like holding his brain. I think she actually travels back. So, um, yeah. It's been a while. It's been, it's been a long time uh, since I've 
this time I read uh, Days of Future Past, but uh, I do believe they both travel back in Days of Future Past. Uh, Bishop's in this too, by the way. Forgot about Bishop because he has such a little screen time. Um, which uh, it's odd because he should be the one doing the time travel anyway. But it is actually Kitty from the comics. I remember uh, that much, so that's accurate. Uh, but she, I believe the inaccurate part is that she isn't actually time traveling with Logan. So they go back to try to stop the Sentinels because the war, they basically are losing the war against the Sentinels. As they explain it in the future, the Sentinels um, start sort of changing. It's sort of like the fear of AI that we have nowadays, where Sentinels start, instead of targeting just mutants, they start being able to find the X gene in people who will have mutants, regular people, uh, who one day could produce a mutant child, uh, and they're exterminating them. So they're exterminating the possibility of mutants. Um, so those humans who were like, yeah, let's get rid of them. Let's get rid of those mutants. Oh shit. You mean my DNA actually could produce? Oh, crap. Now the Sentinel wants to kill me and I don't have any powers to fight it. So that's sort of where they're at. Um, but these Sentinels, it's a cool fight scene. <coughs> it's described fairly well by Miles. The whole film is described pretty well by Miles. What I will say is that Miles's narration is by the book. And I hate the book. And I'm going to I'm going to pee on it, throw it in the fire, because I'm tired of this book. This book is annoying. There's like a point where they're like the man in the cape, and they do it for a long time. I'm like, who the fuck is the man in the cape? Who's the man in the cape? You know, they just keep like, uh, like they use some names, but then they don't use other names, because we have this weird rule where like if you, if, if somebody's name hasn't been said, then you can't use it. So you have to, like, describe these characters. And so I think the character was Magneto. It was a little hard. I was trying to follow. I was like, Magneto, this is... What? I know I get. I know it's Ian McKellen's version of Magneto. The dude was in three films. This is his fourth appearance in the X-Men universe. You can... You can use Magneto. Like, I... I I've had this debate before about sequels and some people who are like, you know, oh, well, no, you shouldn't use the name. I am not on that camp. I I don't care about that at all. I think it's dumb. And first of all, I also don't care if your first film in the franchise is like the seventh film in the franchise. You know, if, if you're jumping in and you've decided that you're not going to watch anything before it and this is the first film that you want to watch and you're and you're making a selective decision to not go back and watch anything before this, uh, and then you get mad because, like, the world is telling you things and you're not discovering them with everybody else, the people who watched the other six films who have been committed to the franchise have every right to be the ones that are catered to, not the random people who are like, ah, oh, you know what? I think I'm going to watch this franchise. I think I'm going to watch Fast 10. This feels like a franchise that should just get into on the 10th film of the franchise. Nah, man. By the 10th film of the franchise, you should just be saying names. We shouldn't be waiting around. You shouldn't be trying to, like, wait for somebody to say Dominic Toretto. You know? Just say Dominic Toretto. Everybody knows who he is. People know who fucking Magneto is. Just say his damn name. Um... It's it's obnoxious. It's I, it, like we, we went the whole film of X Men First Class, and uh, they constantly they just found new ways of describing Riptide. It would have been so much easier for somebody to just say Riptide, and then people who are fans of his of the, from the comic books, yeah, he's basically just there because he has cool powers, and uh, and needed for the scene. He doesn't really contribute that much. Um, but for for fans of the comic book series who are like, who is this? You know, I'm trying to think about watching that film the first time in theaters. 
I, as somebody who grew up reading comic books, because X-Men has been around a long time. I mean, you could be uh, in your 50s and 60s and be an X-Men fan easily uh, and had read the comic books. So, and then you're sitting and you're watching X-Men First Class and, uh, you know, you're, maybe you turn blind and you didn't quite get to X-Men First Class. And uh, you're really waiting on this audio description to come in clutch. And it just keeps describing what this dude looks like to you. And with, he's like, he's got dark hair. And you're like, what the fucking mutant is this? You know, just use his, dan use his name from the comic book series. You know? Here, it's Magneto. It's not even a shitty villain. It's not even a shitty, like, side villain. It's <sighs> so frustrating. It's, uh, it takes me out of it. I love Miles. I think he's a, he, he's a solid narrator. His, his stuff is good. He sounds great. Um, but he, the stuff that he does adheres to the policy of this crap, of these rules. Uh, I remember listening to the Star Wars films and, um, they give character descriptions based on uh, the lineage of the film. So once you have seen, once a character has appeared in the film before, um, they do use the name. So they assume that you have seen a previous Star Wars film. And that should be the case here. Uh, that's how Miles describes the Star Wars films is he doesn't like wait to tell you who Luke Skywalker is uh in every single film like he doesn't he just tells you it's Luke Skywalker you know so and Vader and, and all the others because they were mentioned already they've already been in the film so um but he will wait to tell you the characters that are new to the film so um there's a little bit of that would not have helped Riptide, that kind of description, but it would help this situation. Um, yeah, that's where I'm at with this. It's all I really wanted to think about, actually. It just drove me insane, uh, was the man in the cape. I was like, who is in the cape? Like, I could remember every single mutant, and I was like, who? I remember, like, I remembered all their costumes. You know, I was like, which one was wearing a cape? Who's wearing a cape in the sequence? You know, I mean, I remembered... Uh, all of the, what's funny is I remembered all of the, you know, the Icemen and the, uh, Warpath and, and people like that, but I kind of forgotten that Magneto was in the opening sequence. I was like, oh yeah, that's right. You are here. Um, my bad. <laughs> you know, uh, forgot that they, that you had teamed up at the end here. Um. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's just something that we, we've got to do a better job of. There has to be, like, some sort of other rule as to, there have to be better rules about this. It was, like, a cool rule when we started doing audio description, but n there are too, there are too many cases where it just doesn't make any sense. Like, it doesn't make any sense that America Ferrer went all of Barbie without a name, um, got an Oscar nomination for a role that has no name. It does have a name. It's in the credits. It makes no sense that Miles did the last film, X-Men First Class, without ever naming Riptide, even though he names Riptide in the credits. He reads the credits. That's probably the most egregious thing, is the fact that he actually had the credits to read. So he reads this character, and you're like, as Riptide? But you never mentioned Riptide. Where was Riptide? That's so weird. Huh. So there was a guy who played somebody named Riptide, but I listened to your narration and God, there wasn't anybody named Riptide in the film. So who is this actor? What character did he play? That's the problem you create. So stop doing dumb shit. Uh, rewrite the book. You know, it's consider it like a living document that moves throughout the course of time and <laughs> stop making dumb choices in audio description. This is a dumb choice. So, um, yeah. The man in the cape. Just name. Just, no, no. 
Magneto wearing a cape, you know, <laughs> done. Sign sealed, delivered, it's out there. Um, otherwise, uh, yeah, it has solid audio description. It does a good job of, d of describing the action sequences, um, uh, the little details, especially the stuff about uh, Mystique's transformations, uh, the mention that Wolverine has bone claws um, in the past because he hasn't yet gone through the uh, Weapon X program. Um, it is sort of problematic that Mag that Mystique is the one that rescues him here because that suggests that Mystique is the one that sends him to Weapon X, which is odd. Um, but... Yeah, uh, it's, it, it is what it is. So anyway, um, I'm, uh, I'm a big fan of this film. Uh, I, I love Quicksilver. Uh, Evan Peters' Quicksilver is so great. And honestly, the description on Quicksilver is really pretty good. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, it is, it's his action sequences, which are visual wonders, the, time, the freezing of time and him running around the room and like slowly moving things. That whole sequence is phenomenal to watch. It was actually pretty solid to listen to. I did not know how that scene was going to work out with audio description, but it worked out pretty well. I think it's important to note that um, if you want audio description for this, you're going to have to find it because Disney refuses to bring the audio description tracks to Disney+. Plus. I don't know why, but they do. They're just putting their foot down uh, about this, I guess. I, I, I don't get it. Um, luckily, again, this is where physical media came into play. I, I was able to put this in, and uh, I chose to review the existing audio description. When it was a film that didn't have existing audio description or known existing audio description, I just used the Disney Plus version. I didn't... There's no point in putting in my DVD when I can just click on Disney Plus and get the same experience of a no audio description. But uh, this does. So for the most part, I like Miles' audio description, but I, I'm just so annoyed by the character introductions for people that in certain places and the naming and just some, it just rubs me the wrong way. Um, so anyway, we can do better. I know we can. We can find uh, better rules and uh, do this unless this. It Do this if this. Do this when this, you know. Uh, and, and, and break that down a little bit more and give examples. There have to be exceptions to rules. Um, and uh, I feel like there are exceptions. Anyway, thanks for watching. This is, uh, this is a favorite of mine. Um, I think X2 is really the one film that I gave the A plus to because it's the film that truly transcends the rest of them and has actually become a favorite of mine. Although I love Days of Future Past a lot. So I'm going to give X-Men Days of Future Past an A. I don't have any problems with it. I didn't have any problems with it in theaters. I was like a, like a giddy little kid watching this film. Um, and, uh... I, I loved it, and I still love it, and uh, I'm a big X-Men fan, so this skews for me. I, I My bias is, is here. So if you think it's not an A film, it probably isn't for you, unless you're a big X-Men film. I'm telling you I am, so they all skew upwards for me. So thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and I will see you guys on the other side.